<laughs> you fool. Something clearly couldn't have come from nothing. That's totally illogical. That's totally impossible. God obviously created everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Well, who created God then? He couldn't just exist by himself. That would be illogical and impossible, right? Not if you apply Christian theological double think, duh! Hey, thanks for the video. I appreciate the effort, but it doesn't seem like you've really thought through this. Christians who employ cosmological arguments to support God's existence are not asserting that every entity that exists necessitates a creator to account for its existence. You are simply not grasping the argument that Christians and other theists are making. For example, consider the Kalam cosmological logical argument. Whatever begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. Notice that the first premise does not state that whatever exists has a cause. The first premise states that whatever begins to exist has a cause. Only a thing that begins to exist requires a cause to account for its existence. So unlike the universe, God does not require a cause to account for his existence. In other words, he exists by the necessity of his own nature. If God exists, why must he exist by the necessity of his own nature? Well, as philosophers, why widely recognize, the number of past events in the universe must be finite since the notion of an actual infinite number of past events is logically absurd. For instance, compare the number of past events to a sequence of falling dominoes, with each moment leading to the next until reaching this present moment in time, the final domino if you will. If an infinite number of dominoes had to fall before the last one, then the final domino can never fall. We can never arrive at this present moment. And yet, we've arrived. Therefore, the sequence must have begun at some point in the finite past. There must be a first cause that precedes all else which started the sequence of events. There must be an unmoved mover, as Aristotle put it. That first cause, by definition, does not have a cause. It exists by the necessity of its own nature. And so, Christians and other theists merely identify that first cause as God. This is not doublethink, since by definition, this necessarily existent entity that we identify as God does not fit within the same category as the things that begin to exist. Oh, and by the way, atheists have no problem with the notion of a necessarily existent entity, because that is precisely how many atheists think of the universe. They think the universe just exists necessarily. It was never caused or brought into existence. So it makes little sense to complain about Christians and other theists applying the same notion to God. Of course, the major problem for atheists is that there is not good evidence to support the idea that the universe exists necessarily. Many things that we observe in the universe did not always exist. For instance, for a relatively short time after the Big Bang, the early universe existed in an extremely dense and hot state, and none of the visible matter we observe today, like planets, stars, galaxies even existed yet. So none of those things exist necessarily because they used to not exist. Even when you consider the elementary particles that make up visible matter, such as quarks, it's not hard to imagine a different universe where these elementary particles are totally different. In other words, it does not seem necessary for a universe to consist of these specific elementary particles. But if that were true, if such a universe could exist, it means that our universe, the way our universe is set up, does not exist necessarily. This implies that the universe is one of the things that began to exist at some point in the past. It exists contingently, hence the second premise of the Kalam cosmological argument. Based on the observation of the expansion of the universe, physicist Alexander Vilenkin writes, quote, it is said that an argument is what convinces reasonable men, and a proof is what it takes to convince even an unreasonable man. With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape, they have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. If the universe began to exist, it has a cause. Theistic philosophers argue that the best explanation for the cause of the universe is a transcendent mind, which is what we call God, who exists by the necessity of his own nature. Of course, people can argue about that, and they do. 
but having a fruitful dialogue about the subject requires being a little bit more charitable and not just assuming that every theist is a doofus. I would encourage you to become a little more informed about the actual arguments that theistic philosophers make. Regarding the Kalam cosmological argument, of course, a good place to start would be the classic book from Dr. William Lane Craig, The Kalam Cosmological Argument. Hey, I hope you find this video helpful and take care. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to see more content like this, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit that little bell so that you'll be notified when new videos like this are released. One last thing, be sure to connect with me on my website, davidwilber.com. There, you can find a ton of free resources like articles and videos, learn more about the books that I've written, and subscribe to my newsletter to ensure you never miss an update. Again, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.